right, so first today, we're going to go over these six things. We're first we're going to talk about the anatomy of the shoulder girdle, and then we will discuss how having a heavy backpack affects that anatomy. So that will be in the primary and secondary effects. Um, also, we will go over pros and cons, then I'll show you some evidence that I've found, and then at the end I'll discuss some recommendations for those for those of you who you know need to have a heavy backpack due to a heavy travels and lots of work. All right, so here we go. First we have the anatomy. Now here's the skeleton and the muscles, and you have like where the muscles attach, where they, where they originate, where they insert. So I'm not gonna go over the names of the muscles too much right now, but what I am gonna tell you is what they do. So here we have the pectoral muscles, which what they do pretty much is they bring the arm in like this. That's their main job. Over here, which we have a bigger picture up there for those of you who can't, who can't see, um, they, bring, they round your shoulders, they kind of bring your shoulders forward. And we're gonna call those muscles the protractors. And then in the back of those we have the, the retractors which bring your shoulders back. That's the main thing I wanna discuss right now. All right, so I've already, just, I've already found someone in the audience who's gonna help me with this. Can you please come forward? I just wanna do a little demonstration right now. This demonstration is going to like, first we're going to start off with a lightweight backpack. All right, Matt, how do you feel? Pretty good. All right, there's not too much outside stress on your shoulders. Nope. It's not affecting your shoulders that much at all. Nope. Okay, here, watch as Matt puts on the heavier backpack. All right, so you can see the front of him right now. You might be able to see he looks a little bit shorter. That's because he's leaning forward. Get the profile view so everyone can see. See how he's hunched forward and his shoulders are rounded forward? Well, that's something that we call rounded shoulder. And the way that happens is, you can take that off now, Matt. Thank you. Yep. The way the rounded shoulder will happen is if the protractors and the muscle adductors, the ones that bring the, muscle, the shoulder in, when that happens, those muscles are contracting constantly. And when, when it's done at a period of time that is longer than normal, it's, it's known as chronic. So when that happens, it decreases the space between, between, the, between the bony attachments. So, um, go to the next slide. Okay, so here we have the names of the muscles. The, uh, the smaller one that was over here with the three bands, that was known as the pectoralis minor. We also have the scalene muscles and, and the pectoralis major. Those are the muscles that cause protracted shoulders, known as rounding, rounded shoulder, and they decrease the distance from the first rib and the clavicle, and they decrease the space for the nerves and the, uh, and the artery passageway. So, pretty much there's an outlet that is within those muscles that the nerves and blood flow travels through. And when your shoulders are constantly rounded, it cuts off that space so they can't so the, there's no nerve conduction, and there's no blood flow. Can you go to the next slide? So secondary effects, this is pretty much what it's called, um, thoracic outlet syndrome. Now the reason it's called that is because it happens in the thorax. And over here I have a picture of kind of what it is. Thoracic outlet syndrome is when the nerves and blood vessels, you know, pass through the small outlet and down the arm. But when your shoulders are rounded, it compresses that area. So you're not getting any sensation, which is one of the effects, and there's decreased blood flow, and in some cases you can have to have surgery for that. It's, it's, it's very severe. Also, you have an abnormal posture, which we saw with Matt, with our own eyes, and with, there is risk of a, of a spinal fracture, stress fracture in your neck, due to you know, leaning forward and having your neck up constantly. It puts a lot of stretch on the vertebrae. Um, and over here, you can kind of see the decreased space due to the muscles constantly being contracted, and and it can also cause like cause like like postural defects that are always happening. You're so used to compensating for the weight that you are always like that, and you're kind of like forward shouldered. Like I'm forward shouldered. I'm a victim of this too, guys. All right, next one. All right, now we're gonna go over the pros and cons. So pretty much with the pros and cons. First, we're going to talk about other cons that happen due to a heavy backpack. After traveling to class with that heavy backpack, you're more fatigued, 
here. You have decreased morale due to fatigue. It's too bulky, so it's hard to fit anywhere, and you're going to have pain. Like nine times out of ten, you're going to have some, some sort of a pain. Even if it's like on a pain scale between one and ten, even if it's a one, it could increase even more than that. And some positives of having a good light backpack. Uh, you'll have good posture for the most part if you haven't already been affected by heavy backpacks. And you're less stressed out, you have less outside stress on your shoulders, you have an increased morale because you will have more energy and which yeah, you'll have more energy to listen in class so that way you're not falling asleep with your shoulders forward. Okay? Alright, so some evidence that I've found based on this topic. It's kind of it's it's very old because this was a hot topic back in two thousand three and two thousand four because kids were like increased their workload is being increased and they were putting more and more books in their backpack. So this first there's a study done in two thousand four in um what was his name? His name was David Sorkowski. He's a chiropractor in California. And he did a study on back pain and backpacks. And he did he used um, three thousand five hundred students. That's a large population. And of them, sixty four percent reported having back pain due to a heavy backpack. And that's 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 very very severe right there. Another one, it was a questionnaire in two thousand three. Um, 1,126 1, 1, 1, children um, ages 12 to 18, which at that time period, that's what you guys were. And it, it is old, but they're, they're like human, a human view on something like such as back pain due to a heavy backpack is not going to change over the course of 10 years. It's still the same. 74.4% um, reported having 2 out of 10 back pain. And in the ones that had heavier backpacks had even more than two percent, than two out of ten back pain. Okay. So we're going to move on to recommendations now. Now, rec now, these are for the people that are hard workers and they actually they actually do need all the books and they and you know it might not be as convenient for them to go back and forth. So here are some suggestions: get some wheels, you know, on, on the book bags with the wheels. Um, there's also straps. I, I had a strap backpack, however, like the buckles broke and now I'm just kind of suffering from forward shoulder right now. Um, you can learn some stretches. There are some neck stretches you can do. Um, I'm just going to go sideways to show you guys. You want to take your hand and press your neck uh, back just like that. And it's a very simple stretch, but it's easy to do and it, it will not, it'll increase your flexibility. Um, shoulder rolls, bringing your shoulders back. Also, be aware of your body. Like now that you know about all, everything that can happen to you, um, you can. Now that you know, like you will be able to correct yourself in that situation. And another one we have is carrying your books in front of you. Now you can take some books out, kind of like in high school. Some some high schools didn't let you walk around with backpacks, so you had to carry them in front. So you know, even the loadout. Also, the, uh, get a friend maybe carry your books with you. Like you can walk next to a friend who has like the same class. They can also carry some books. And also wear both straps on your back at all times. Like that, that's always helpful too. All right, and that's my presentation. So um, pretty much just want to remind you guys all to lighten the load. Pretty much protect your backs.